Managing a hotel wasn't just a job for me, it was my life. I'm Grace, and this hotel was my world until he walked in. He was impossible to miss a young man in a suit that screamed money, his attention glued to an expensive phone. He checked in with a smile that could knock you off your feet. Good evening, I'm Ethan, he said, his voice smooth as silk. I'm here for a couple of nights. Anything interesting happening around here? I found myself smiling back, a bit caught off guard by his charm. Well, Ethan, the city's full of surprises. Depends on what you're looking for, I replied, handing him his key. Our chat was brief, but it sparked something. Maybe it was his curiosity, or the way he seemed genuinely interested when I spoke. He didn't stay long, but when he checked out, he left a note. Enjoyed our talk. Care to continue it over dinner? It read. I hesitated, not used to mixing work with my personal life. But something about him drew me in. We met at a local restaurant, a cozy place where the chatter and clinking glasses made it feel like a bubble away from the world. You really have this place dialed in, don't you, Grace? He said with a smile as we sat down. I laughed, feeling oddly at ease. Guess you could say I've had some practice. Dinner flew by as we talked about everything and nothing. He was an open book, or so it seemed, sharing tales of his travels and investments. When the conversation turned to me, I found myself opening up more than I usually would. I told him about losing my parents, about how it was just Mia and me against the world since I was 21. That's a heavy load to carry, Grace. You must be incredibly strong he said, his eyes reflecting a mix of admiration and something else I couldn't quite place. I shrugged, brushing off the compliment. We all play the hand we're dealt, right? Mia's been my priority. Our parents left us a little something, and I've been careful with it. Made it grow, bit by bit. He nodded, his expression thoughtful. That's impressive. You've got a good head on your shoulders. As the night wore on, I realized I hadn't laughed this much in a long time. But when I tried to learn more about him, about his family, he'd skillfully change the subject. My folks and I don't see eye to eye. Let's just say they have their ideas about life, and I have mine, he said, a shadow crossing his face. I didn't press further. We all have our stories, our scars. As the evening drew to a close, I found myself not wanting it to end. There was something about Ethan, something that made me feel alive in a way I hadn't in years. My life with Ethan felt like a whirlwind, each day a new adventure, every moment spent together filled with laughter and dreams of the future. He had this way of making the ordinary seem extraordinary, turning simple dinners into unforgettable evenings. Ethan, I still can't believe how fast everything is moving. I said to him one evening as we sat in our favorite little cafe, the one with the dim lights and cozy corners. He reached across the table, taking my hand in his. Grace, when something feels right, why wait? I've never been sure of anything in my life, he replied, his eyes holding mine with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine. I know, it's just, everything's happening so fast. It's a lot to take in, I confessed, feeling a whirlpool of emotion swirling inside me. He squeezed my hand gently. I get it, but trust me, Grace. I'm here for the long haul. I want to build a life with you, a future. And I want to start by making our wedding day the most memorable day of our lives. The way he spoke about our wedding, with such passion and certainty, it was hard not to get caught up in his vision. He painted a picture of a day so lavish and beautiful it took my breath away. Imagine it, Grace. A ceremony that no one will forget, a celebration of our love. It's going to be perfect, he said, his voice filled with excitement. And the honeymoon? You mentioned something about the most expensive hotel in the world? I asked, a mix of curiosity and apprehension in my voice. His smile widened. Yes, it's all part of the plan. But I need you to trust me, to take this leap with me. Your savings for the wedding, my funds for the honeymoon and our future home. Together, we'll make this a reality. 
I hesitated, the practical part of me screaming caution. But looking into his eyes, full of love and promise, I found myself nodding. Okay, Ethan. Let's do it. Let's make this wedding a day to remember. As the weeks flew by, the wedding preparations became all-consuming. Ethan was a man of action, taking care of every detail, ensuring that our day would be nothing short of spectacular. And as I watched him, so full of life and determination, I couldn't help but fall even deeper in love. Ethan, you're amazing. The way you're handling everything, it's... I don't know how to thank you. I said to him one evening, as we reviewed the list of guests and the lavish menu he'd planned. He pulled me close, his arms wrapping around me. Grace, seeing you happy is all the thanks I need. This wedding, it's just the beginning. Our life together is going to be even more beautiful. But amidst the whirl of excitement, there were moments when doubt crept in, whispering questions in the quiet of the night. Was I moving too fast? Was I getting swept away by the romance of it all? Every time those thoughts surfaced, Ethan's assurances were there to chase them away. His words, his promises, they were my anchor, holding me steady in the storm of uncertainty. The wedding prep had my days packed, but amidst the whirl of cake tastings and flower selections, I knew I needed Mia, my sister, my confidant, by my side. Since our parents passed, it had been us against the world, and her input meant everything to me, especially now. I called her up, hoping she could sneak away from the cafe she worked at. Hey, Mia, think you can ditch the aprons and coffee smells for some tulle and satin today? I half joked, my voice laced with hopeful anticipation. Mia's laughter came through the phone, light and familiar. For you, sis, I'll trade coffee stains for bridal trains any day. Give me an hour to wrap things up here, and I'm all yours. The bridal shop was a wonderland of white and ivory, dresses cascading like waterfalls of lace and silk. As I tried on gowns, Mia's presence was a calming force in the storm of satin and sequins. That one, Grace. It's like it was made for you. Mia said, her eyes lighting up as I stepped out of the dressing room in a gown that felt just right. I studied my reflection, the dress hugging every curve and cascading to the floor in a sea of soft fabric. You think? I feel. I don't know, like a real bride. I admitted, a smile creeping onto my lips. Mia's grin matched mine, but in a fleeting moment, I caught a shadow pass over her face, quick and troubling. Before I could question it, she was up and pulling a dress off the rack. Mind if I give this one a whirl? Just for kicks, Mia said, holding up a stunning gown that caught the light with every movement. I laughed, the sound a mix of surprise and delight. Planning on eloping, are you? Or is there a mystery man you've been hiding from me? Mia's laugh, usually so carefree, held a note of something I couldn't quite place. Oh, Grace, you know me. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. But a girl can dream, can't she? She quipped, though her gaze darted away, hiding something. The day rolled on, a blend of laughter and whispers of silk. But Mia's mood seemed to flip like a switch, her usual bubbly demeanor, clouded by moments of distraction. Everything okay, Mia? You seem a bit off today. I probed gently, concern threading through my words. She was quick to dismiss it, a wave of her hand erasing my worries. It's nothing, really. Just cafe chaos. You know how it gets, Mia assured me, but her forced smile didn't quite reach her eyes. As we left the bridal shop, the weight of her secrets seemed to hang between us, an unspoken tension that neither of us could quite navigate. I wanted to believe it was just pre-wedding stress, maybe a spat with a troublesome customer, but the nagging in my gut told me it was something more. That night, as I lay in bed, the excitement of finding the perfect dress was overshadowed by the puzzle that was Mia's behavior. She was the one person who had always been an open book to me, yet now, there were pages I couldn't read, words hidden just out of sight. And as the wedding day edged closer, the joy I should have been feeling was tinged with a worry I couldn't shake. Mia and I had faced everything together, but now... It felt like there was a growing gap, one filled with secrets and unasked questions. 
Little did I know, the answers to those questions were about to turn my world on its head. It was a day like any other, or so I thought, until Ethan left his phone buzzing and forgotten on the kitchen counter. As I went about tidying up the apartment, the constant notifications from his phone nagged at me, a persistent reminder of something amiss. The lack of a password was a surprise, but it was nothing compared to the shock that awaited me inside. The messages between Ethan and Mia were like a punch to the gut, each word a betrayal that tore through my heart. They weren't just having an affair, they were planning to push me aside like I was nothing, like all the years of sisterhood with Mia meant less than the dirt under their shoes. I read and reread Mia's message, confessing her pregnancy with Ethan's child. The words blurred as tears clouded my vision. Can't believe we pulled this off. She's such a fool, falling for every lie. And now, with the baby, we can finally be together, just as we planned, it read. The world around me seemed to spin, a carousel of deceit and treachery. Ethan's reply was no better, declaring his love for Mia and his eagerness to see me humiliated, ousted from my own wedding. She's just a naive cash cow. Can't wait to get rid of her and start our real life together. This wedding will be perfect, thanks to her money, he wrote. I sat there, the phone heavy in my hand, a storm of emotions raging within me. Betrayal, anger, disbelief, they all fought for dominance, but above all, a cold determination began to take root. They thought they could use me, discard me like an old toy? I'd show them the price of underestimating Grace Anderson. When Ethan returned, his carefree demeanor was like a slap in the face. Hey, babe, did I miss any important calls? He asked, casually picking up his phone. I forced a smile, my insides churning with anger. Nope, just the usual stuff. Busy day? I replied, my voice steady, despite the turmoil within. He flashed that charming smile, the one I now knew was nothing but a mask. As always. But nothing's more important than coming back to you. He said, leaning in for a kiss I had to force myself not to recoil from. From that moment on, I played the part of the oblivious fiancé, to perfection. I smiled, I nodded, I went along with the wedding plans. But behind the scenes, I was plotting, planning my revenge on the two people who had betrayed me in the worst possible way. Each passing day was a test of my will, a balancing act between the role I had to play and the fury that burned within. But I wouldn't let them see me break. I'd bide my time and when the moment was right, they'd learn the true cost of their treachery. And as I lay in bed each night, the image of Ethan and Mia's deceitful faces etched into my mind, I made a silent vow. They would pay for what they'd done, and their twisted game would be their undoing. I was no longer just the jilted fiancé, I was the architect of their downfall, and my revenge would be meticulous, calculated, and oh so sweet. The days leading up to the wedding felt surreal. On the surface, everything was perfect, the flowers, the guest list, the dress. But beneath the facade of perfection was a storm brewing, a tempest of anger and betrayal that I held tightly within. Ethan was his usual self, all smiles and affection, blissfully unaware of the storm he was about to sail into. Grace, everything's coming together, so beautifully. This wedding is going to be the talk of the town, he said one evening, as we reviewed the final preparations. I nodded, my smile practiced and polished. Yes, it's going to be a day to remember. I replied, the words laced with a meaning he couldn't possibly grasp. Mia was harder to face. The sister I had loved and protected was now a stranger, her every word and gesture a reminder of her betrayal. Yet, I kept my mask firmly in place, the mask of the loving sister, blissfully ignorant of the knife she had planted in my back. Grace, you're handling everything so well. I don't know how you do it, Mia said one day, as we finalized the seating arrangements. I looked at her, the sister I thought I knew, and forced a laugh. Oh, Mia, you know me. Always had a knack for organizing chaos, I said, the irony of the statement not lost on me. As the wedding day drew closer, the tension became almost tangible, a tightrope I walked with precision and care. Ethan's phone was now always guarded, his conversations hushed and hurried. But it didn't matter. 
I had seen enough, knew enough. The morning of the wedding dawned clear and bright, a beautiful day for a beautiful disaster. As I got ready, the reflection in the mirror showed a bride, serene and poised. But behind the veil and the makeup was a woman on a mission, a woman who would no longer be a pawn in someone else's game. Mia's running late, huh? Ethan remarked casually, adjusting his tie. I met his gaze in the mirror, my eyes giving nothing away. Yes, but she'll be here. Wouldn't miss it for the world, I replied, the double meaning clear in my voice. He nodded, oblivious, to the undercurrents. Well, she's always been a bit unpredictable. But today's about us, Grace. Our new beginning. I turned to face him, my smile a masterpiece of composure. Yes, Ethan. A new beginning indeed, I said, my heart stealing itself for what was about to come. And as I walked down the aisle, the eyes of friends and family on me, I knew that this was it. The calm before the storm was over, and the reckoning was about to begin. The vows were waiting, the guests were watching, and the stage was set. It was time for the truth to come crashing down, and for the real show to begin. Standing next to Ethan in front of the priest, my heart was a mix of hope and trepidation. The words of the vows hovered in the air, a promise of forever that was about to be shattered in the most brutal way. The guests, unaware of the storm about to break, watched us with smiles and teary eyes. But then, the unimaginable happened. Mia, dressed in a bridal gown that mirrored my own, stormed down the aisle. Her eyes locked on mine, not with sisterly love, but with a cold determination that chilled me to the bone. Move aside, Grace. I'm the one who deserves to be here. Ethan loves me, and this child I'm carrying is his. Mia declared, her voice cutting through the stunned silence. The room erupted into whispers and gasps, the guests turning to each other in confusion and disbelief. Ethan, rather than showing any sign of shock or remorse, let out a hearty laugh, his true colors shining through the polished facade. Well said, Mia. Grace, you've been a good host, but this is where your part ends. Why don't you join the audience? This is Mia's moment now. Ethan jeered, his words dripping with mockery and contempt. The audacity of their betrayal, so public and so cruel, sent a shockwave through the crowd. But as the reality of the situation sank in, my reaction surprised everyone, including myself. I looked at Ethan, then at Mia, and smiled. Of course, why not? I wouldn't want to miss the show. After all, I did pay for it, I said, my voice calm, betraying none of the turmoil inside me. Mia and Ethan exchanged a confused glance, clearly not expecting such a composed response. The guests, too, were baffled, their eyes darting between us, trying to make sense of the surreal scene unfolding before them. As I gracefully took a seat among the guests, my head held high, the whispers grew louder. What's she up to? Is she really going to let this happen? The questions buzzed around the room like a swarm of bees, but I remained serene, a statue amidst the chaos. Ethan and Mia, now standing together at the altar, looked unnerved. My calm demeanor had thrown them off, their plan to humiliate and discard me not unfolding as they had anticipated. What's your game, Grace? Why are you so calm? Ethan asked, his voice a mix of curiosity and concern. I met his gaze, my smile never wavering. No game, Ethan. Just enjoying the fruits of my labor. Please, proceed. I'm eager to see how this plays out. I replied, my words a velvet-covered dagger. The ceremony resumed, but the atmosphere had shifted. The guests watched in a mix of shock and anticipation, unsure whether they were witnessing a wedding or the prelude to a dramatic reckoning. As Mia and Ethan exchanged vows, the words felt hollow, a mockery of the sacred promise they were supposed to represent. And as I sat there, surrounded by friends and family who were struggling to comprehend the spectacle, I knew that this was just the beginning. The real show was yet to come, and Mia and Ethan, in their arrogance and deceit, had just secured front-row seats to their own downfall. As the priest asked if anyone objected, the doors burst open. A woman, older and more worn than either Ethan, stormed in, her eyes blazing with fury. 
Stop this wedding right now. She demanded, her voice slicing through the silence like a knife. Ethan's face turned ashen, his eyes wide with shock. Catherine? What are you doing here? He stammered, the mask of the perfect groom slipping away. Catherine, Ethan's legal wife, as I had discovered, marched up to the altar. I'm here to stop you from making a bigger fool of yourself and these people. Grace, you deserve to know the truth, she said, turning to me with a sympathetic look. The guests murmured among themselves, the scandal unfolding before them more gripping than any soap opera. Mia clutched her stomach, her face a mask of shock and fear. Catherine continued, her voice firm and clear. Ethan is a liar and a cheat. He's in debt up to his ears, his investments failed, and he's been using you all to dig himself out of his hole. And Mia, you poor girl, you're just another pawn in his game. The room erupted into chaos, the guests rising from their seats, the whispers growing louder. Ethan tried to speak, but his words were drowned out by the uproar. I stood up, my heart pounding, but my voice steady. There's more, I announced, silencing the room. I hired a private detective after I discovered Ethan and Mia's affair. Not only is Ethan already married and drowning in debt, but he's also been hiding a daughter, a child he's never supported. Mia's face crumpled, the reality of her situation crashing down around her. Ethan, is this true? Tell me she's lying, she pleaded, her voice breaking. Ethan, now pale and defeated, had no words. His lies, his deceit, all laid bare for the world to see. But the final blow was yet to come. As the guests processed the revelations, Ethan's parents, two stern and imposing figures, entered the room. I had reached out to them, told them everything. And now, they were here to confront the son who had brought shame to their name. Ethan's father, a man of few words, spoke with a voice that resonated with disappointment and anger. Ethan, you are no son of mine. Your actions today and in the past have shown your true character. You are cut off from our family and our fortune. As the room settled into an uneasy silence, I looked at Ethan, Mia, and the shattered dreams they had tried to build on a foundation of deceit. The pain of betrayal still throbbed in my heart, but standing there, amidst the ruins of what was meant to be my happiest day, I knew that this was not the end of my story. In the aftermath, I found myself in the cold halls of justice, seeking reparation for the damage Ethan had caused. The courtroom felt like another world, a place where the pain and humiliation I had endured were translated into legal jargon and paperwork. Ethan, you've not only broken a promise, but you've also shattered trust and exploited generosity. You owe me more than just an apology. You owe me compensation for turning my life upside down, I stated firmly, my voice echoing in the quiet courtroom. The judge's gavel sounded like thunder in the tense silence. The court finds in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is hereby ordered to pay $50,000 in damages for the distress and financial loss caused. He declared, his words a bomb to my wounded spirit. As I walked out of the courtroom, the burden of the past months felt lighter. Justice had been served, but the road to healing was just beginning. Ethan's troubles didn't end with me. Catherine, his legal wife, fueled by hurt and fury, launched her own legal battle, demanding compensation for his infidelity and neglect of their child. The once suave and confident man was now entangled in a web of his own making, his lies and deceit finally catching up to him. Mia, my sister, the person I had trusted and loved more than anyone, found herself alone and abandoned. Ethan had fled the city, leaving her to face the consequences of their actions. She was pregnant and scared, a far cry from the carefree and happy girl she once was. Grace, I know I don't have the right to ask for your forgiveness. But I'm lost, and I don't know what to do, Mia pleaded one day, her eyes filled with tears. I looked at her, the sister I once would have done anything for. Mia, you were my family, my blood. But what you did, it's not something I can just forget or forgive. You chose your path, and now you have to walk it, just like I'm walking mine. The distance between us was more than just physical. It was a chasm filled with betrayal and hurt, too wide and too deep to ever bridge again. Life moved on, 
but the scars of those tumultuous months remained. I focused on rebuilding my life, on finding peace in the simple things. I had loved and lost, trusted, and been betrayed, but through it all, I had survived. And as I looked back on everything that had happened, I realized that the most important journey was the one I was taking within myself. A journey of healing, of rediscovering my strength, and of learning to trust and love again.